Hi, my name is Anthony Lim. I'm the director of pediatric emergency medicine, and this is my friend Eddie Carmel Torado, who is a uh, nurse manager for GI transplant here at Mount Sinai Hospital. Um, it's great to sit and talk to you. Um, you know, I guess we can just start. Like, you know, tell me a little bit about yourself and and you know the work that you do here. I work in the inpatient unit. GP9 Center. Uh, we do kidney, liver, small bowel, sometimes pancreas. So if you need an organ of that sort, um, <laughs> we'll be the ones to take care of you. Uh, I've been in Mount Sinai for quite some time. I started off as a staff nurse here, a baby nurse, and then I became a coordinator after coordinator, assistant nurse manager, and from assistant nurse manager, the nurse manager. So that's my history here in Mount Sinai. Fantastic. Yeah. What made you go into nursing and, and healthcare, you know, in, in general? Oh, golly. Um, I come from a long line of medical professionals, and my mother was a nurse. So she started off in the Philippines, and then she was recruited here to New York, Lincoln Hospital, where I was born. For my immediate family, there's four girls. Mm -hmm. uh, when my mom and my dad were together, um, my dad really wanted a boy. We were good with three, and then my dad was, oh, let's try for one more, one more. But he ended up with another girl, so. <laughs> no. Guess who was the tomboy in the, in the family, right? Um, and then when they separated, it was just my mom, my older sister stayed in the Philippines, so actually all four of us, um, we, we were born here. I, I think uh, I have a very similar story. So I come from a short line of medical professionals. Uh, my mom was a nurse as well, uh, and she started practicing in the Philippines, but then was recruited here um, in the 80s to work at Long Island College Hospital. Okay. Um, my family was split up for a period of time. You know, it's usually different circumstances, and like I mentioned, it's, it was immigration status and so um, my mom had a work visa to be a nurse here but she didn't have the sort of the whatever allow allowance to, to bring her two children so I lived with my aunt and my brother I'm curious like how long was the separation you know it seems like forever when you're a three-year-old oh, or yeah, four-year-old sure. um, but all intensive information that I've received it was about two or so like years. Um, so we lived with my aunt and my uncle and my cousins and my mom worked here and um, you know this is a you know my a common story um, yeah. in in Filipino culture mm -hmm. um, and in many cultures and and you know it still remains that um, most of my family is in in the Philippines my um, my blood relations, as they say, uh, and my family, as I as I call it here, are the nurses that my mom worked with, um, who are my aunts and my uncles, and their kids are my cousins. Um, that's the family that I have, uh, and and you know, it's it's something that comes really easily to me. And for me, was actually my first experience in this chosen family. You know, as I grew up. Um, and came to know who I am and, and in coming out as LGBT, um, I also got to choose that family. And so it's a very, you know, interesting experience and in how, you know, my practice with my Filipino culture sort of led me to become a happier and healthier, like, adult uh, in the LGBTQ community. My son is adopted and my husband and, and, and I have always told him, parents are the people that take care of you. Mm -hmm. Parents are the folks that, you know, put you to bed, make sure you're doing okay, uh, and love you. And that's the most important sort of thing. And, and uh, you know, I can, I can really genuinely say that is my lived experience. It's like hard to um, understand, like, oh, I, why did my mom, like, and dad leave us and bring us here and there over there? Um, eventually, I understood why when I got older, you know. But like, when you're in elementary school, going through a lot and in like this so foreign place, it is sad. Um, uh, it took me a little bit to really like understand, it was probably by college is when I realized like, okay. I didn't realize all the things that you just described till, I don't know, maybe like last week. Wow. <laughs> um, or definitely around the time, you know, that I, that, 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 you know, we had our son, 
right? To understand what difficult choices and sacrifices um, that you have to make as parents and have some sort of, you know, reconciliation with how I felt, you know, the, uh, I'll, I'll say, yes, I was lonely. And, and, and I think that um, for a four-year-old kid, you can't understand why your mom has left <clears throat> four years after, like, my dad died. Mm. Um, all I know is I was a four-year-old kid without a mom, right? And so <clears throat> that understanding came later for why that needed to happen and why that was important. We were in a place where we could be taken care of. My mom could work and be the breadwinner and send money back until she was in a position to have us come over. And it was around the starting of school time, right? And it was when her, like many folks, would do the trudge of, <clears throat> we would go to school, she would go to sleep. We would come home from school, she'd help us with her homework, we would go to sleep and like a babysitter would come and then she would do the night shift. Like that was years and years of, of, of that. Um, and it didn't really come into like clear focus why until I was an adult. So you're right, like it's, it's um, I think it's really interesting that uh, we can see our families and our parents as people, right? As opposed to like these perfect individuals. How did you come to that understanding? How did I? I think it was um, me in high school helping with my younger sisters while my mom was doing o overtime mm -hmm. and then having to deal with them being teenagers. And I'm like, Lord, was I like this when I was a teenager? <laughs> I'm sorry, mom, if I, if I was like this, this is crazy. Like being a parent is a lot. Mm -hmm. And that's when I realized like, okay, like I honestly don't know how parents do it, you know? Like I'm, I have a, a son now, he's two, and it's um, the balancing act, like you said. When my dad was around, like he did the night shift, my mom did the day shift, and they would just do the switch, mm -hmm. you know? Like, okay, I'm gonna go to sleep, I have the kids, you go to work and then vice versa. And like when we were in school, you know, like he was able to sleep longer, but nonetheless he still has to pick us up and all that stuff. So it was, it's a lot. I realized that a lot of um, Filipinos and I'm sure like all, a lot of immigrant um, families had to do that. Well, it was such a pleasure to sit here and talk with you today. I've learned so much about you. I've learned so much about myself in, in sharing that with you. Yeah, and thank you so much for having me here. Um, it was wonderful getting to know you as well, Anthony. Fantastic, thank you. Yeah.